Hello, World's Forest Focus. It's two wins out of two for the Reds over Christmas as they beat Manchester United 2 1 at the City Ground. Brilliant performance, brilliant result, brilliant way to end the year and take us into 2024. Here with me to discuss the game is former Reds midfielder Lewis McGugan. Lewis, good evening. Are you well? Yeah, good evening. Yeah, very well. Thank you. Very well. Good, good. Hope you had a good Christmas and enjoyed the game. Um, all right, we, like I said to you before, we'll just wing this a bit and uh, hope people enjoy it along the way. What did you make of it overall? Yeah, no. I, I listen. I think it was uh, over the over the hundred minutes, shall we say? Uh, I, it was a it was a very enjoyable enjoyable game. Uh, I, th I feel like the first ten minutes, I think we started really, really well uh really well and and then after that i think it it got a little bit scrappy uh, i think both sides really uh petered out and to, uh, until half time uh on all but they didn't really create anything uh if there was if there was going to be a positive coming from from that half it was definitely going to become from us uh and then i think second half we started brightly again uh they they didn't really they didn't really offer anything and then like I said, once once we got once we got the first goal, uh, I think it was a I think it was a well created goal. You look at Montiel and the full backs, which we'll talk about uh, in, in in more depth. But I thought they was they was very good, uh, and it was a very good passage of play, uh, and it was a great finish because uh, sometimes them finishes, even though you're you're in front of goal, uh, as you're in your box, you have to guide them. But once you, it's all about good contact, and I think Dominguez got great contact. Uh, and you know what I mean. That put us that put us ahead, and uh, and well deserved. Listen, I think we, we are going to have a conversation about about the other end and about the goalkeeper. But sometimes that happens, and 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 you have sometimes individuals and players make mistakes. But that's why your team and teammates sometimes get you get you out of trouble. Uh, and fortunate for for Turner, uh, Morgan got him out of trouble. But I think it was nothing nothing more than we deserved. And I think on a whole, you look at the the scenes after the game and kind of the all the players onto the pitch, the staff onto the pitch. I feel like it's a it it it's a real big real big turning point. And last game before the end of the year, I think we sit here now and we look two weeks ago, or even last week, and when we were talking, everybody's sitting here uh, tonight. Uh, at the end of a, a year, going into the new year, full of full of positivity, and 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 really looking forward to what can be achieved. Um, good to have five hundred people with us already. Three minutes in, um, so very grateful for that. Uh, I'll get our sponsor plug in now while I remember, because sometimes I forget. And I went to the NAV pre-match with my daughter. I'll give her a mention later. Great to see so many people there. Uh, so yeah, coming and saying hello, really appreciate that. So yeah, thanks to NAV for their support. And um, I'm sure people there had a good day, but definitely the best Forest pub in our opinion. Um, just in general, Lewis, well, I, I was just really impressed with the way, I mean, we looked like a Premier League team and we didn't always last season, but there was much more composure on the ball, much more positivity. Did you like, from a former player's point of view, that we just try to be progressive and take the game to them as much as we could? Yeah, listen. I I I feel that if, if you're looking at the opposition, uh, I think they're they're in they're in a lot of trouble. Uh, but at the end of the day, you can only play against what's in front of you, and it's Manchester United. Whatever scenario they are, they're still a fantastic football club, and got fantastic individual players. But I feel as as a team, I've, like I said, the first ten minutes, especially first half and, and second half, I think we really set a stall out and set. What we wanted to do, and and that was to to impose ourselves on the game beyond the front foot, and I feel that's 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 early signs has been a common theme of of, of how Nuno wants to go about things. But I think looking at it from afar, from a fan, uh, from from looking at that that performance, you look at the Newcastle performance, and it, you look at the Brighton uh, Bournemouth performances in 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 spells. I think it's a real I think it's a real positive positive time. There's so many positive things in there that we can look and, and, and really look forward to to, to how it progresses. Uh, listen, the manager, uh, first and foremost, will know that there's, there's a lot to do. And now going into that off the back of them results into the January transfer window, I think it's massive and it really be important window for the football club. And hopefully the 
the manager can kind of reshape the squad that he wants and that's people coming in but also people going out and I feel that it's a it's still early days and that's we have to kind of some so hard to not get excited but it's only three games and it, it, it it's it, it's a really positive place to be uh, after kind of the last six weeks we've had but I think it's uh we just now need to take take each game as it comes and 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 uh and and see where it takes us what did you make of the team selection obviously um Sangari was suspended Dominguez came in Hudson Ajoy dropped to the bench we got an extra man in midfield did that work well for you yeah, it was a bit of a, it, the, the surprising bit was a Dominguez and where we were playing and how we how we how we shape up and and first in the in, in the first half he shaped up uh, off the left and I and and to be fair from that wide position at times coming in uh, and being that probably extra number ten I, I I thought it worked very well and if you look at his goal and look at the positioning where he took for his goal and position he he kind of. Uh, found himself uh, sometimes when you from experience have played out there but not as an out and out winger and you're playing out there as a shape but also looking when we have the ball to come inside it's it, it's sometimes uh, harder for the opposition fall back and uh, and players to pick you up and co- sometimes you can find them little areas and them little them little holes and, and you look at the first goal uh, and that's what he did and like I said before it's a it, it's a great finish because they're not they're not as easy as they look um, excuse me. I am reading the comments as we go along. Um, I mean, a lot of them are mostly about Matt Turner, so we might as well come to Matt Turner now. You know, uh, worst keeper I've seen at Forest, got to be his last game, etc., etc. Et I, I know you don't like changing keepers, but when one's got such a fundamental flaw in his game, for me, of his his distribution is so poor. Can you keep picking him, or do they have to make a change, whether it's Lacodemos or buy someone in January? Yeah, like I like I've said before, it's the it's the I don't like the the changing of a goalkeeper or the changing of a mistake straight away in and out. But I think if you look at it across across this season, uh, numerous occasions, I feel that is uh, his ability on the ball in terms of his feet is 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 probably he's probably going a bit too far now. I feel like it's it, it, it's maybe it's every game numerous times in a game and and i think you look at it and, and i was watching it on tv tonight and you look at gary neville and look at it's it, it's a it's a quite a known fact now and that's where nuno has to be careful now is is, is other teams are going to play on it and and that's it's sometimes you can look and think right don't go back to him don't go back to him but sometimes the team if they press the opposition will press in a certain way which at times you have to go back to the keeper that's why this kind of new breed of football this keeper being the extra man that's why it's become quite quite uh vital in in the way his teams shape up so sometimes it's not as easy as just thinking well just don't go back to him just don't go back to him but i think that is where we the manager will have to be careful now is teams playing against nottingham forest now if this kind of carries on we'll, we'll be looking to play on it to play on it to play on it and i i don't I don't quite understand. I don't quite understand how, in terms of his feet, he's so uh, he's so bad. But it's just it's just probably getting worse, and and that's the thing sometimes as well. Even from a player point of view, he'll know that he'll know that the spotlight's on him. He'll know every time the ball's coming back to him, everyone's waiting for a mistake, and also it breeds a bit of a panic through the team. The team the team will know you're playing teams, and you look at players, and everyone. You see it every day. People know the strengths and weaknesses, so they will know. And sometimes, at certain times, if you look tonight, if you looked at the games before, even when the Forest are in control, something like that can then breed a bit of panic, give the some other team something to kind of, uh, kind of grab onto. And that was a that would be a big decision moving forward, whether they decide to to change the goalkeeper in terms of what they've already got in the building, or they decide to go in the market. But that's that's for the football club to decide, but I but I feel that in terms of how it's gone, uh, like I said, I'm not a big a fan of constantly changing goalkeepers, but I think that you can't you can't invite pressure when it's, it's staring you in the face. Um, I'll, I'll play devil's advocate with a few people in the comments. Um, they're saying you know he's made one mistake, he's made a lots of good saves today, and he has. 
but does that cancel it out or do you have to look at you know the bigger picture of where we're at with the goalkeeping situation yeah i think i think in terms of the saves and it and it did and even after and even after the the mistake he still made very good saves you look at the ericsson shot but they're also they're they're saves that i expect a goalkeeper in the premier league to make and first and foremost that's his job now he does he does make saves and he makes good saves at, at right times and he, and he comes and and he does come and take the ball uh in good areas which sometimes is is a massive massive bonus as a team especially the back four it takes the pressure off the off the back four so he does do that but i think that listen i i understand that he's going to be better keepers uh with their feet that's just the, that's just the way it is and you look at the 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 prime example of the top of Edison, but Edison is in, in a category of his own and everyone's different with the feet. So we understand that goalkeepers, first and foremost, they're there to save save shots, but also with the, how the game's transitioning, that is a massive part of it, what they're doing. Now, we, we like I said, we, we know that he's not going to be an Edison, but also I think that there has to be a, at least a standard a standard of not a constant threat of thinking every time it goes back to him, something could happen. You can't, you can't play in the Premier League. Uh, these games are so they decided on such small details. I don't think you can continually keep going into the games worried, worried about if the if the, if the ball goes back to the goalkeeper, something could happen. Ball goes back to the goalkeeper, something could happen. Uh, I just don't think you can have that scenario. Uh, over 700 of you with us now. We're racking up the audience, which is great. So if you haven't joined us before, do like and subscribe. It certainly helps. And I do read all the iTunes reviews, some more uh, good ones coming in there, which I do uh, appreciate, of course. Um, it's interesting defensively, isn't it? He's changed both fullbacks since coming in. And actually, Nico Williams and Harry Toffler have done really well. But equally, you know, I thought Montiel was even better than against Newcastle. And Aina was really good. And then Nico comes on and does really well. And Toffler does really well. It was quite... It's fairly bold management, but those fullback changes have, have paid off, haven't they? Yeah, I, I think if you look at it prior to what we say, Nico and and and, and Toffolo, I think they did really well, and I I don't think we should look at it and think that they've been automatically straight dropped. I think he used he used the situation, especially in Newcastle game, the changes he made. I think it was building up to the to the January transfer window. He wanted to have a look at pretty much everyone at his disposal and then he can try and make a bit more of a plan of how he's going to move forward and and, and in terms of the window who he wants to ship out and, and and maybe bring in so i don't think that the two players that have that have been left out of the team have done anything wrong and and that they've been dropped i think that they'll play uh, a big part moving forward but i feel that he wanted to look at a look at the other players in the building and i think that the the result and the performance maybe at newcastle Sometimes it kind of forces the managers and to keep with the same team and keep with the kind of same personnel. Uh, and if you look over the over the games that Montiel's coming off, I, I think he's acquitted himself very well. And I'm, he, like I said, he has assists for the first goal tonight. So, I, so I think it's a good thing, and I, and I think that's where we would want the squad to be. That people are are playing uh, really well. People are, are pushing each other for a position, and I think all it all it does that that good competition. It just Make sure that come the come the team that is picked, that they're the players that are playing playing the best at that time. Yeah, um, I think um, Greg or the comments point out, uh, Aina's going to Afcon, so that will present an opportunity back for um, Turner and uh, Toffolo, no doubt. Maybe Turner can play left back. I don't know Toffolo certainly. Um, we'll just go through <laughs> through the team in general because I thought centre backs are really good. Nia Kate dealt with Garnacho. Who you watch him live? A little rat. He really irritates me watching him. But he really dealt with him well, and I thought it was his probably his best game of the season. Do you see a centre back pairing there? Even though again he's off with the Twafcon now near Cassie, but him and Murillo look like they're they're forging a bit of an understanding now. Do you think? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, he's he's gone with a back four, and I and I think that they've done they've done very well. You look at tonight, you look at the players that they was playing against. They're they're, they're top players. Uh, and and I thought they've coped. The, the only the only thing that maybe the manager might want to look at, and the only probably negative of them two playing together is the two left footers, mm -hmm. and it's just a balance sometimes of playing two left sided centre halves. Sometimes you just 
you, you, it's just for balance. Some managers like to have that look and have that balance of both sides. I think that the it's, it's a something that you see very rarely uh, because left foot or centre offs, and you look at Murillo's kind of when he's coming to the team and 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 the kind of introduction he's had. Left foot or centre offs, they aren't there aren't many about. Uh, you don't you don't really see a lot of them. So to have kind of two centre halves left footed it's 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 one of them things but I think that that'll be something that the the manager will look in terms of what he wants to do moving forward. But I think the only negative on them too is just is just pretty much maybe balance how the manager sees it. But in terms of the performances that they've put in so far then yeah they've done very well. You're totally on board with Murillo's, you know, runs forward stuff on the edge of the box. He tried a trick tonight, which was totally unnecessary, and they broke on us. Do you give him a bit of license because he's a young, talented player, or not? I don't. Sometimes I think it, like the youngness. Yeah, you can use that to a bit, but that's. I think that's just him. That's just him. That's the way he plays football. That's the way he's been brought up. Uh, and at times, is it a little bit of a risk? Is he, is he might going to give you a chance? You look, go back to Liverpool away. There's the one where the risk and 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 it kind of works against you. But I think that's part of his game. I think that's what makes him so so good to watch. Uh, I think that's maybe what gets him away from 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 different players is that he has that bit of bit of a risk taken at times. And when it comes off, it looks very good. Now, as he gets more experienced, as he gets older. And as he gets more kind of information from from the staff and the manager around him, hopefully he will harness that and understand that there's a time and a place. But I also think sometimes when you have when you have players, it's it's sometimes it's a part of part of their character, uh, and it's probably best to ha- help them to use it to the best of their, their ability instead of trying to take it take it out of them. Um. I mean, I'll come back to midfield. There's people in the comments quite rightly saying about, you know, Mangala's unlucky. I thought Ryan Yates might really suffer when Nuno came in and he's done really well in his two games. I don't think you can make a career out of falling on the ball and winning free kicks, but he's not he's not far away because he's doing that really well. But equally, he's, you know, he was uh, economical on the ball and you can kind of carry a player who doesn't have a massive range of passing if others around him do. Uh, is Yates going to do enough to stay in and do you kind of, like that headache that Nuno has to try and fit two or three in that area now. Yeah, and that's what when I come back when we said just previously about about the fullbacks, I think I think it's a good thing. Uh, we mm. spoke, well, especially myself, has spoke very glowingly about Mangala and about what I think he can offer. But sometimes that's just part part of the squad. That's part of how football works. Uh, sometimes people get opportunity and and they get the opportunity to grab it. And I think if you look at it. Uh, especially Yatesy, especially tonight, fair play to him. Fair play to him. Because sometimes to allow the other players, to allow Morgan to go and be the free spirit he is, to allow Alanga and Dominguez to go and move, you sometimes need, you. every team needs someone to balance it off. Uh, and I think he's here, especially tonight, is that bit of insurance uh, for the back four and for the team to allow the to allow the attacking players to go and try and try and create chances. What about um, Morgan? Then we've spoken at length about him. Obviously, you played in in that role. We're seeing the best of him these last couple of games. Is it just because he's playing central? Is it because there's more for him to to aim at, or a more forward thinking team? What's what's changed to get get Morgan into the form we've seen the last two or three matches? I think I think first and foremost, I think if if when we look at it, when we brought him into the club and the money that was spent on him, this is why we spent the money on him. This is what we wanted from him to be that focal point, to be that difference maker, and to wear that. Like that's why the number ten shirt. That's why you want to wear it to have moments like that to to be that difference. And and that's why it's straight away you give him that number ten shirt because it's it's straight away it's that kind of position a number uh and it does mean something some people might but it does mean something when you have that number 10 shirt on the back you have to be that creative spot for your football team you have to be that player at times to to come up with a moment uh and and possibly and possibly win your team the game uh i look at his performance last night 
I look at performance in Newcastle. The, the the biggest thing that I look at it is is just the enjoyment. The enjoyment you can see, the the free spirit, the way he's moving, uh, the way he's playing with his ball. If we, I think we spoke uh, a, a few weeks back, I can't can't remember what game it was, but I can't can remember you mentioned about that you just felt that he was just getting a bit annoyed with himself, a lot of arms and flustered and. You look at the you look at the body language now is completely different, and he he has a he would have had a fantastic relationship with Steve Cooper. We know that, but also this is this is the manager that as when he started, this is the manager that he's also got a connection with. And the big thing is as well, like it like they both stated when they when they worked with together before, he was a, he was a boy, he was a young boy. Thinking now he's a man, he's a dad, he's in a completely different mindset. The manager now coming into the change room, speaking to him, he's speaking to a completely different player because of of of, of the, the experience and and just the the growing up that he's done. So I think he's I think he's going to be a massive leader for this football team, football club. And I think that you look at the performance tonight, topped off with a goal. It's a great finish, but they're the positions that we want him in. They're the they're the headlines that we want from the number ten from. The playmaker, because that's what he is, and at the end of the day, that's what we brought him in to this football club to do—to produce moments like he did tonight. And from your experience, when you scored a goal, that you know you're replaying your mind's eye going to sleep tonight over and over again, because it's that that dream goal is it's bent round the keeper, bent round the man. It's the kind of goal that you personally would have loved as a player. I bet. What does that do for your confidence heading into the next next game? Yeah, there it is. It's confidence. And we the the thing about football, we can all everyone can sit here and, and have their opinions of player they might not be playing good, might be out of form. Football so much is based off confidence. So, and, and and when a player is confident, you see a different side of them. Uh, and I, I and I feel that tonight you look uh, along with the Newcastle performance, I feel that you just see a completely different body language. And listen, that's not that's not to sit here and say that something was was different beforehand with the previous manager. It's not that, but sometimes a different voice, different manager, different staff around him, and I notice a lot, even more so this weekend. A lot after the game, he's brought a lot of his old staff in. A lot of them staff he would have worked under before, and just little things like that from a player. It's stuff that they know him. They know his. They know his character. They know what makes him tick. And it's just little things like that. So he 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 will be looking at it and thinking it's a change. I'm now back in that position, but I'm here uh, to to create stuff and, and be a focal point in this team. And I and I feel over the last two games, everyone can see the the massive uplift in his performance. But I think more so is his body language and his and his, and his excitement in terms of his his movement on the ball and and, and in and around that attacking area. Um, I'll ask you about one more player. We've done virtually the whole team. I don't really need to talk about Chris Wood. He knew he was, he was fine tonight. Um, what about Elanga? Another assist. I still think he's not Brennan in the terms of... I don't know what the difference is. Uh, Brennan's got the X factor. Maybe Elanga hasn't. But maybe I'm wrong about that. He's racked up another assist tonight. He looked more composed on the ball, which has a, been a feature of Nuno. Um, you know, it's, I thought he played well. I thought he, you know, he's had some good matches. Am I wrong that he's not on Brennan's level or not? What do you think of where he's at? No, I think I think they're two. I think they're two different players, even though they look like they mm. play the same position. And a lot you can look from afar and think they've got the, a lot of the same characteristics. I think they're two completely different players. Uh, but I but I but I think what we have to do is is understand that Brennan's gone, and understand that we we have to look at Alanga and, and what he can offer. Now, at times, is he is he going to frustrate? course he is but attacking players do because they take more risks but I think if you look over the performances I think he's steadily got better and 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 that's all you ask for from uh from a fan watching are they improving are they getting better with more confidence is he getting better 100% uh he's creating stuff he's making assists at the end of the day before a game especially wide players that's your job assist and score and he's doing that so Hopefully that can continue. Hopefully he can get more confidence. Hopefully he can feel a bit more more part of the of the club, 
and that will all come over time. And I feel that early on, he's he's got a manager that clearly wants him to be involved and clearly sees him a, 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 an important part of this squad. Uh, so I still think that there's there's more to come from him. But I think it's again, it's positive signs. Yeah, his performances last three have been really good. Man, you might regret sending him the way that they're going, obviously. Um, just lastly on the match, well, not lastly, we'll do a few more, obviously, but um, I don't know where they got 10 minutes from. Like This is a general bugbear, but one minute of over injury time in the first half, 10 minutes in the second half, for virtually, you know, similar um, lack of incident, basically. But we managed the game well, didn't we? I thought we, we were pretty professional seeing it out. We didn't look flustered. We weren't camped out. A strong across the six yard line uh, it was it, that was encouraging as well wasn't it yeah and 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 I, like i've said before sometimes you 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 try and make decisions as a manager and you make them split decisions and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't and 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 I, and actually i watched when he when he made the subs and he and he changed the full backs and uh and, and he volley on I know we had a we had a similar discussion at the Luton game with Steve Cooper when he made their decisions and and it backfired on him and and I can, when it and it happened tonight and it looked at it just literally uh, a few minutes later, Man United had a corner uh, and then it was a bit of confusion in the box which you get and that's what I mean. Sometimes you need that little bit of a look. You need things to go for you. A little bit of confusion. Boom! Straight into Turner's hands. Pressure off. And they're the little things at times that when you when you're going along these moments as a player and as a manager, you need a little bit of luck. Sometimes that could go against you and it can make look, why did you make them subs? So I think that we've seen the game out really well. I think at the certain times in that in that 10 minute spell, like I said about the set piece, little things like that, what just takes all the sting out of games, that went in our favour, uh, which was which was positive. Because sometimes they can go the other way and you can be feel like you're on a bit of an onslaught. But I feel like the the, the game petered out uh, in, a, in, a, in a good way uh, and we managed to get over the line. Yeah, I should give a specific word to Danilo. Someone in the comments said that he didn't really come up in our general midfield discussion. Yeah, I thought it was really good. You know, chalk and cheese from, um, was it the fir first half at Newcastle? He looked much more, again, composed, confidence. I mean, is it just a confidence thing with him? Or He's not played for a while. He's not played consistently. So, like I said, again, he's got to find his feet. He's got to find his way back in the team. And like I said, these players, cut Montiel, you look at Danilo, these players that have been been on the outsides and, and, and now they're coming to the forefront. And that's the whole point of having a squad in, in any league, but especially the Premier League. You need that squad because players are going to go through little dips. Uh, and it's it's then up to the teammates to come in, come in and, help, and help finish the job. So, like I said, it's going to be an, a real important, real important month for the football club uh, in in many ways. And and like I said, hopefully at the end of that window, uh, hopefully the manager is a bit more kind of happy and a bit more in control of of what he's got at his disposal. Uh, as Nick says, do us a favour and hit the like. Is that not showing? Sure? Wi-Fi is a bit slow. Uh, hit the like button. That would really uh, help us out and appreciate it. 750 people watching, which is great. Um, where are we at big picture then in terms of, you know, more gives right afterwards was speaking, looking up the table, which I totally agree with. You see Brentford on a bit of a slide now and Everton have lost, uh, was it 4 nil today? Maybe the bubbles burst there. Um, and the relegated, the relegated teams, I wish. The promoted teams uh, all lost. Tricky fixtures today. Right, where are we at? Do you think now heading into January? Yeah, and, and that's the biggest thing. If we just spoke about then, if probably two weeks ago, we're looking at Everton and what they've done and, and the amount of points they've accumulated, and there's no reason that we can't go and do that. But again, I think we just need to take it game by game and understand that it can change that quickly. We're in a we're we're in such a a better mood, uh, a better place the whole fan base, the football club, the players. So that's a real big positive that we've got to take. But I think, and I know Nuno will be saying, and the players, let's just, we've had a really, really good, uh, especially in the last two games, but it can change very quickly, as you can see in terms of the results. So let's not get carried away because we've got to understand where we've been all season and how, how at times we find it difficult to get results. Uh, we've just got to take the momentum from what we've got 
into the window and just keep that positive positive vibe uh, and just take that into games. And, and the players will be taking that instead of going into games now a bit uh, a bit sheepish or not really sure what's coming. There'll, there'll be a lot more confidence there throughout the football club. The training ground will be in a lot better environment. And that's a massive thing. I think sometimes people think you leave a game and they don't realise after a loss what it can do at the training ground. The training ground's a lot more morbid, a lot more people kind of head down. That would be a completely different scenario now. People will be wanting to go into the training ground. They'll be, they'll be wanting to talk. So that's straight away. The team becomes becomes even closer. And that's why everyone wants to get three points and win games because the amount of the amount of positivity it does for the whole football club. But I think in terms of the bigger picture, we have to just keep understanding and taking each game as it is and on and giving this manager an opportunity to shake this squad over in the next month, see where we are at the end of the transfer window. And then again, we can have another conversation in terms of how, how things look from there. Those are the fans um, in the comments. I think, you know, the positivity, does it come from just uh, the way we're approaching games as well? And players will thrive on this as well. Like say, we're going out to try and win games. Like even when they pegged us back today, Hudson Adoy was the first sub on. Does that kind of breed positivity? You can understand why fans are getting excited about it as well. Yeah, completely, hundred percent, and 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 every manager's got their way of doing it, and and this manager at the minute, the results happening, but also he's coming in fresh, looking at this the squad, looking at what he's got at disposal, and he's maybe seeing him in in a different way or seeing players in a, in a different light or how he wants to use them, uh, and like I said, fans are are, are going to look at it, and it's going to be a different factor than what was previous. The fact that we're getting points with that also is going to make it all feel like it's all working in one direction. Uh, but I think that if you look uh, at the attacking, I think it's more the front foot. I think it's more going at the teams. I think the start was really good and it's like trying to put the foot down. Uh, I think at times, especially this year, even at times when we've gone, we've gone ahead, we've sat back and we've kind of like went into that low block again. And at times we've just caused a bit more pressure for ourselves where I felt like at times a lot tonight we're always looking for that next goal to kill the game. So that's really positive to see and it's and it and it and it's I'm sure it's nice for the fans to fans to witness. Um what about January then? We've spoken about it at length. I spoke about it with Fletch the other day and Emily and Greg about what we'd like to see now. The temptation with every win and every performance is we don't need X, we don't need Y. What what do you think we need in January now? Uh, I think I feel that we've had a a, a really good, especially results wise, last two games. But I I still feel that we can't. We have to understand where we was prior to this, where the squad was, where the baby the imbalance was. The lot of work that needed to be done January, missing results, paint over a lot of cracks and, and kind of take the pressure off. But I still think that there's a lot of work to be doing in terms of shaping the squad for how the how the manager will want to do it. I think they've got to make a decision on the on the goalkeeper situation, how they want to do that. They've already got two in the building. So it, it's it's not as simple as just trying to get one in when you've already got two number ones that you've you've only previously signed uh six months prior to to kind of who are already still in the building. So that's a that's a kind of situation that they've got to got to kind of direct through. I feel maybe if you look at this, if you look at Joe, you look at uh, Scott McKenna, you look at Philly. There's a lot of centre halves that are on the books, but not really involved at the minute. So I think that that area will get trimmed, and 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 I think we need we definitely need one more. Uh, I think so. I think that's an area that. They want to come in. Obviously, the cat is he, he going away for African nations, so that's 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 a gap there that there, there straight away. Uh, I feel that he would he'd possibly want another winger because the likes of Alanga and Hudson Adoy, you always want you always want options in that area. Obviously, Tywo will be coming back, which is which is which is uh, going to be a massive bonus. I think the 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 performance and the and the Kind of confidence Chris Wood has, has had over the over the uh, the last 
last few weeks, that's also going to keep him in 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 that kind of the frame of of, of fighting out with Taiwo. So I, so I, so I think that, like I said, I, I've said it a few times before. I think a lot of it will be players leaving. I think that will be more important and, and shaping up how he wants to squad and maybe bringing that size of say size of number down. And maybe he will want two or three key players in key positions. And I think maybe January that's all he might do. But I think there'll be there'll be a lot more people probably going out the door than than people coming in. That's for sure. Yeah, I don't really address individual comments, commenters, but I, I don't know. Brandon, are you watching a different stream and commenting on ours? Saying because you said we've been negative throughout, and I don't think we have, but that's fair enough. Um, someone told me, uh, pretty reliable, uh, that Fabio Carvalho was there tonight, and the Liverpool winger who's been on loan at Leipzig and had a bit of a stinker. So maybe that's true. Uh, and we are in for a winger. I mean, do you, would that be right up there on your list? Because we've only got a Langren, Hudson, Odoi. Then you think probably one more. You can't just flog them to death, can you? Especially with Hudson Odoi's injury record. Yeah, exactly. And 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 that's if you look at it tonight, made a little change. And Dominguez was out there, but probably in terms of moving forward, would he want that option of Dominguez out there? Uh, so listen, I think that's an area when you're at that top end of the pitch, especially wingers. I think that's that scenario that you you'd want your most options. So. I think I think a winger would be would be high on the list. That's for sure. Uh, right, I think we're getting towards the end. Um, you didn't get to go to the your son went to go to the game, didn't he? Then you managed to yeah. um, talk him down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> took... yeah. But we watched it. Like I said, we watched it. We watched it on TV and uh, this one. But uh, I think I'm going to probably get to the Arsenal game next. Uh, so. So yeah, and like I said, from even from watching it on TV, you could see the atmosphere. You could see after the game, and I think that's the biggest thing in terms of a lot of the conversations that we've had. If you look at the importance of last year, especially at home, that's what created that dynamic. Uh, was the atmosphere at, at the city ground, and I felt like tonight, uh, from what I've seen, it was it was very much going back to uh, kind of back to that 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 theme and. That can only bode well for for the football club and the players because, like I said, we need to turn this season around. And I feel like tonight a performance against Manchester United at home. You look at the result against Newcastle. We were sitting here two weeks ago thinking, "Where's the next goal coming from? Where's the next points coming from?" And to come back with six points from from two games, especially tonight, I feel that it's a it's a it's a fantastic way to to finish off a year. And I think all it does is now it just gives us confidence. Uh, and everyone in it with that good feeling of, of of moving into the new year with with hopefully maybe new signings and a and a really feel good factor of this new chapter. Yeah, I agree. I, I actually thought well, the main United game was was quite winnable out of the three, but the Newcastle away I thought we played so well. Maybe we got them at the wrong time. And Bournemouth away I thought the Bournemouth away. Bournemouth at home I thought we played well. Apart from our own errors, and obviously the the Bolly decision killed it a bit, but yeah, it's been a massive turnaround. So really happy with it. Um, I mentioned my daughter; I took her to the game, and you know, you know, when you take your boy to a game, and as soon as we win or do anything, they're, they're like, "That's it, they're in." It's like the mafia; they're yeah. they're sorted for life. And she, like today, she was desperate for us to score. She's seen uh, the first Premier League game: nil uh, nil v Bristol City, a four nil defeat at home to Fulham and an 8-0 defeat for Forest Women at home to Man City. So for her to see a goal, and then a second goal, yeah, she was properly, like, so happy. Um, so that was brilliant. That made my day, yeah, that dad moment and all that. Yeah, and I think that is, that is the, that's the, the key of, of continuing, just making generations and, 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 and being in that stadium and understanding that, that atmosphere and, and being around that. And they just get kind of, obsessed and 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 really want to be a part of it and that's just that's just the fun side of seeing it as a parent and seeing it as as, as people connected and you know football is is a love and a passion that brings so many people together and i feel like tonight was a was a real uh big positive result performance because there's been some sad times bad times over the last six to eight weeks uh, so I feel as a fan base and a football club, we, we have to really in, enjoy tonight uh, and, and, and enjoy 
hopefully having that environment back at the city ground then big clubs come in there understanding what it's like uh and and to feel and witness it and hopefully this is this is that foundation now to to really push on yeah it was the first game I, first win i've seen this season as well i've been to a lot of games <laughs> but that's the first win so yeah it made me happy it made me it was like feeling, coming out of that brighton game last season like in terms of turning a corner and positive momentum so yeah, I really feel that for sure. Uh, I think we'll leave it there. 767 people with us, which is great. Um, like I say, do like and subscribe. Uh, it is massive for us. And obviously, you know, the new venture has gone really well. I'll put the video up again. Uh, yeah, um, good to see so many people coming up and good to see so many people watching and joining with us and actually having a win to talk about. Well, consecutive wins now is massive. So thanks for all the comments. Uh, I did follow them, but too many to put up on the screen because we had so many... Uh, on board today but do join us uh, back on Tuesday myself Emily and Gary and we'll talk more about this game and uh, look ahead to what's coming up uh, FA Cup next let's win the FA Cup Lewis we're going to win the FA Cup yeah yeah it looks like that so you just you just you never know you never know <laughs> you never know well yeah uh, well, we probably won't but we can dream we can dream my daughter said um, are we going to win the Premier League now so yeah Let's dream, certainly. Uh, let's feel positive after tonight. Uh, right, we'll leave it there. Like I say, thanks very much, uh, everyone. Have a good few days, and we shall see you soon.